Hi guys, it's Just Some Honest Fiction, and welcome back to my channel. So I recently finished reading Crescent City 2, House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass, and my mind is completely shattered. So this video is going to be a spoiler-filled deep dive into Crescent City 2. All right guys, so like I said in the intro, this video contains all of the spoilers. So if you have not read House of Sky and Breath yet, please stop watching this video. This is your only warning. Now, I was trying to figure out a way to do this. I just have so many thoughts about this book. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually watch my predictions and theories video and then respond to what I got right or react to what I got right, what I got wrong, or what I think is actually gonna happen in Crescent City 3. And then I'll end it with an overall book review and then just like spoilery discussion. So if you're looking for something in particular, definitely utilize the timestamps down below. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram and Goodreads, both linked down below. With all that out of the way, let's talk about House of Sky and Breath. All right guys, so I have my computer here and I'm gonna be watching my House of Sky and Breath predictions and theories video and then commenting on what I got right and wrong and also what I think might actually happen in the third book. So this is really gonna be more of like a deep dive into the book and then I'll have my overall thoughts on the book at the end. Please utilize the timestamps down below. All right, let's jump in. Read the book, then come back. So the first one isn't really a theory, it's kind of just like a generalization. It's House of Sky and Breath. So we're gonna assume that we're gonna be getting more information on the creatures from that house. So the Fae and the angels. But, oh, we get so much more information on the Fae and the angels. <laughs> um, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Also, I didn't realize the sprites were part of that house and then they were kicked out after the whole human rebellion. So I wonder if we're gonna get any more info on Lahaba's family or her, um, where she was descended from because I just love- We do get more info on Lahaba's family. I wish we got a little bit more, so. Ethan ends up stealing three different sprites from the architect's residence, and those sprites end up becoming like Flynn's cheerleaders. I absolutely love that. I like that we also got a lot more Flynn in this book. So we did find out a little bit more about them. We also find out that Lahaba always said she was descended from this like great sprite, and it turns out that was true. And then they mention that in some point that Bryce should go and talk to like the head of the sprites. So. I do think sprites are gonna play a bigger role going forward, but I wish we got a little bit more. I miss La Haba so much. She was one of my absolute favorite characters. I did from because I just loved La Haba. That death completely broke me. I was sobbing both times I read Crescent City. Like I knew about it the second time on my reread and it still hurt a lot. So I would love to get more info on La Haba. And also I'm interested to see how the, I did cry both times for, from La Haba. Deal with Bryce, because we know that yes, he did love Bryce's mother, but also he's been pretty terrible to Bryce and Bryce really has no relationship with him. So I wanna see how the Autumn King is gonna navigate dealing with Bryce as being more powerful than him and also being blessed as a starborn. All right, so the first real theory. All right, so with the Autumn King, he's still acting like a jerk. We know that he didn't arrange marriage between Bryce and Cormac. We know that he is still not the best person. However, I do think that he does care about Bryce and Ember. I think that he also might actually know about the Asteri and what they actually are, and that's why he had the different maps and stuff in his office, like the astronomer said. And I think the reason he's been waiting for a Starborn heir is because he knows the Starborns can go up against the Asteri. Now, does that make him a good person? No, I think what he did to Rune was absolutely terrible. Torturing him, not okay. However, I think there is more to the Autumn King and I wanna see how he reacts to the fact that Rune is now being held captive by the Asteri. I think he's gonna lose it. All right, so the first real theory, who is Hun's dad? So we find out at the end of Crescent City that um, Adius, who I always want to call Adidas, and it's not his name, Adius and Jessaba knew Hunt's father, and they, I think Adius says that Hunt's father would be proud of him, and then says that Jessaba would know more about Hunt's father. So I do like the fact that we got more of Adius, or actually, we didn't get any of Adius, but we got some of Adius's backstory. The fact that Adius actually killed, or Adius was in love with Thea, and that's the reason he had his brother go and kill Sirius, um, the, his brother being the Prince of the Pit, kill Sirius. 
and I love that Adius actually has this whole love story and backstory. However, we didn't get any Adius in this book. We actually find out that it was Regulus or Regulus who was in disguise as Adius that we see in cat form in this book. So that kind of stunk. I really hope that next book we get a lot more Adius because he was my favorite love interest. That has since changed, but still, I really like him. So like apparently Jessica knew Hunt's father for a longer amount of time than Adius did. So that kind of gives us some clues of who Hunt's father could be. My personal theory is that, I don't know if I'm saying this name right, Regulus? I was so proud of this theory and it's wrong. At the summit meeting, the only Astari that we meet in Crescent City, um, Regulus looks at Hunt and kind of like stares at him for a second in Crescent City and SJM made a point to like point that out. I feel like Regulus is actually Hunt's father. I don't know if Regulus realizes this or like what's going on there. The only... Yeah, I don't think he is. So I think, I forget, I should have looked back to see who actually said it, but someone mentions that Hunt was created or bred to be a weapon against the Asteri, and then another person, I think it might have been um, the Bloodhound, Mordok, who said that Hunt doesn't smell like any Malakim that he's smelled before. So I think that Regulus was actually staring, or Regulus, I cannot say this guy's name, was actually staring at Hunt because he realized that he could be used as a weapon against him and was just kind of acknowledging that. So I don't think that he is, I don't think Hunt is actually descended from the Asteri. I think that he is something all his own. Um, I was very off on this theory. <laughs> the only reason I feel like there's a possibility this isn't correct is because I don't think Hunt's father would be proud of him for standing up against um, the Malakin and the Angel Order. So that doesn't really make sense. However, Regulus is part of the Orion constellation, I believe, or it's a one of the uh, stars in that constellation. So the names kind of go together pretty well. Um, I saw someone else post like a whole explanation. I think the whole names might have been just SJM trying to trick us because I also was like so believing that because all of these like star names like work together and they do like it does kind of make sense when you put it that way. I think she might have just like thrown those in there to like throw us off her trail of combining the worlds. We'll see. <laughs> Not really positive, but apparently they do. So this is the theory I'm leaning on. I think Hun's dad is actually Rigilus, which is one of the Astari, and at some point they're gonna have to go up against each other. But there are other that theories for who Hun's dad is. So another theory that I really like is that Hunt could be the son of one of the seven princes of hell. However, I have a whole theory about the seven princes of hell that a lot of other people share with me. The theory about the seven princes of hell is also drastically wrong, but we'll get into that a little bit later. theory about Hunt, but anyway, there's a possibility that Hunt could be one of the children of the seven princes of hell. And also this would make a little bit more sense because Hunt is said to have this crazy lightning power that like none of the other angels possess. So there's a very good chance that Hunt is actually a half breed. Still a possibility, uh, unlikely that he's descended from one of the seven princes of hell, but it's still a very minor possibility. And also that goes with the whole thing of Hunt being Bryce's mirror because Bryce is a half-breed, so Hunt is probably a half-breed. I get, I think that's true. Um, I don't, I do like the fact that Bryce and Hunt now have like this whole power dynamic where Hunt can share his power and like charge up Bryce. I really like that. I thought that was a really cool detail she added. Not detail, a really cool like magic system dynamic that she added. Another person um, I saw said that he might be the son of the uh, Star Eater, uh, the Prince of the Pit. I don't remember enough about that character. I want more Prince of the Pit. Um, I think he is so fascinating. I, obviously, I think he's gonna play a bigger role in the third book. Um, I just don't know how to feel about him. And I still, once again, I have to do a reread of this book. If you know, let me know down in the comments below. Is he the one that sent the demon wolves to test Bryce or was that actually the Underking? Because the Underking kept saying he didn't do it. And I, I still, at the end, I wasn't sure exactly who did it. I'm sure it was said somewhere and I probably missed it. So let me know if you know. But that's also a possibility. Another theory that one of my friends actually said that he could be Jessica's, the Under King. He could, Hunt's dad is definitely not the Under King. I'm, I'm pretty certain of that. Um, the Under King was a deplorable, horrible character. Um, yeah, I don't think he's the king's son because Jessica, like I said earlier, said that he knew 
Hunt's father and Jespa works for the Underking currently. So that is also a possibility, but I'm very interested in finding out. That's like one of the top things I really want to know and I hope we find out in House of Sky and Breath. Although I feel like that might be something that SJM pushes off until like book three. And she's definitely gonna push it off to book three. Uh, we still don't know who Hunt's dad is. So we will see, but I'm very excited and I'm going to stick with my original theory. I think he is Regulus's son. All right, this next theory is really out there. However, I picked this up on my reread um, and then I was trying to look for other people that might've had a similar opinion as me. So this all started because another theory I was so certain on and I don't think, I, well, I'm not right. However, I do think the history that actually happened is very fascinating and I like it just as much as this theory. I have had a similar opinion as me. So this all started because I feel like Adius isn't inherently evil and he's supposed to be a prince of hell. It seems like he's Adius isn't inherently evil and we find that out. It might be for selfish reasons or not really sure yet, but he just didn't strike me as like a prince of hell. Now, what if the Asari who are showing all of these terrible, um, they just seem to have such evil motivations. What if they're actually the princes of hell and they were able to trap the, so they switch places. All right, so the Asteri. We find out that they're actually harvesting the first light and there are these like alien leeches that go to different worlds. I think they're the Daglin um, from A Court of Silver Flames. And I think it's Amran or someone mentions them saying that they were these evil beings that drank magic like wine, but then they were cast out of that world. So I'm pretty sure that's a little crossover. Um, I mean, there's so many crossover things. I'm gonna do a whole crossover video, but that's what I think. I think the Daglin and the Asteri are actually the same thing. Um, I think I talk about them being the seven princes of hell and they reversed, that's not what happened. However, they are definitely evil. Essentially, I'm not explaining this very well, but what if the Astari are actually the princes of hell and the princes of hell are actually the Astari that are trapped? Which would explain why Regulus really doesn't want Bryce to use the horn to open gates because that might actually release the princes. Oh, I was wrong there. Regulus really wants Hunt, or wants Bryce to open uh, gates using the horn. So we find out that Regulus wants Bryce to open a gate to the Fey world because the Fey killed or tried killing one of their members or like something to that nature. Um, and we find out that they are, like I said, these leeches that go to different worlds and like suck power, the first light and the second light. So he actually does want to use the horn. I didn't realize that when I was making this video, but yeah, the princes of hell who are actually Astari and maybe even get their places back, if that makes any sense. I'm sorry, I'm kind of rambling, but I think that's it. I think that the Astari are actually the seven princes of hell, which would go with the hunt theory I talked about earlier, where I said that hunt is actually the son of one of the princes of hell. He could be Regulus's son because Regulus might actually be a prince of hell that is now pretending to be an Astari. If that makes any sense to you guys, but that is my current theory. So that theory was wrong, but that's okay. So we do find out all about the Astari and I'm very interested to see what happens. Um, I'm very worried about the fact that Rune and um, Hunt are now being in control of the Asteri. The fact that Hunt has that tattoo again, that part hurt so much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so this next one, I'm pretty confident in my theory. Um, and that's who the heck is Jessaba? So Jessaba seems very selfish. She's always threatening to turn people into animals. And she's, we still don't know who the heck Jessaba is. I'm still gonna go with the theory that I say here. And I think that's it. We find out that the Under King does know Jessaba by another name and she might be over 400 years old, but that's all we really got. Kind of dislikable in the beginning, but as the story goes, I really ended up liking Jessaba as a character. I also kind of felt like Jessaba felt a little bit too much like a plot device in this book because we don't ever really see her. She's just there via text kind of helping them out. Um, I didn't love the way Jessaba was portrayed here. I think she could have like shown up or, I don't know, didn't love it. As a character, I think she puts on this like cold front, but I think she really does care about Bryce or she at least cares about this rebellion enough to help. She's definitely in some part uh, related to the rebellion. So I've seen, I do think she's still related to the rebellion. I've seen some people say that Jessaba is actually Sirius, and Sirius, for those of you who don't remember, was an Astari that was killed, and they're saying that maybe she didn't actually die and she's in hiding. I don't think Jessaba is Sirius, only because I think Bryce is probably the reincarnation of Sirius because she has the light. Anyway, I think Jessaba is actually one of the priestesses or a descendant of the priestesses of Perthos. So I 
figure or I thought this only because of the library. However, after I did some Googling, I found another person that said, oh, she also has these Arkesian amulets and that would make sense to why she has them. And I'm gonna leave their thread um, from this Facebook group in my description because they found way more evidence than I came up with. I was just like, oh, she likes the books. Maybe she's a priestess uh, from this, uh, from Perthos. So anyway, that is my guess. And I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna happen is Jessica is actually gonna be a descendant of the priestesses of Perthos. I stand by that guess. I think she is gonna be either a descendant or a reincarnation of the priestesses of Perthos. Theory that I have absolutely no evidence for, but I think Sahar is alive and she is gonna throw a wrench in Hunt and Bryce's relationship. And I'm, this isn't the theory I thought I was about to talk about, but I still think Sahar might be alive. But we also find out that she's kind of a jerk. Um, she was presented in a way by Hunt, like we found out some things about her that she, I don't know, I just didn't like her as much. I just feel like the more we get to know about Sahar, the less I like her. I'm interested to see if that happens. I just have a feeling that she's not dead. I really don't. And that would be the, like the perfect emotional drama for Hunt to have to deal with. And I think she's gonna end up popping up in either this book or the next book. And then another question that I just am hoping we find out more about. When I did my reread, I realized that the sword that Rune has, there's actually a dagger that's supposed to go with it. And it's only mentioned for like a second. The dagger is truth teller. Okay, so I was so excited when I was reading when I got to that last chapter. So we find out that in A Court of Silver Flames, uh, Amran is talking about how there was this sword, Gwyndian or something, that was blessed with starlight. And that was used to kill off um, these beings. And then it hasn't been seen for many years. And also we find out that in what I'm talking about in this theory, that there's a dagger that goes with it. So I believe that the dagger that actually goes with the starred sword, which is Gwyndian, is truth teller as is truth teller, which is so awesome because Bryce just landed exactly where that sword is. Now, is Az gonna actually give her that dagger? I highly doubt it. Um, I'm very interested to see what happens with this crossover. As soon as I read Scarred Hands, I was like, oh my God, it's Az. So I was not someone who believed in the whole crossover thing happening. I thought SJM was doing a little bit of fan service. However, it all makes sense. And there's just so many little details and I was so excited when I got to that part. So anyway, I think that the dagger is actually as his truth teller and that somehow Bryce is gonna have to use it along with the star sword. And then we don't talk about it anymore. So maybe this dagger is gonna be found in House and Sky and Breath or maybe they're gonna need the dagger in order to do something with the sword. It is, and that's the other thing. SJM threw so much information at you that I feel like you missed little things that do relate back to the original series. It's a lot. <laughs> so I don't know, but I'm very interested and I want to find out what happens. And this theory was not mine. However, I 100% believe in it. I will once again try to leave the, I will definitely leave the link to the Facebook group, but also I'll try to find the name of the person that came up with this theory because I had no idea about the stars. But anyway, people are saying that Sirius is, act, or Bryce is actually the reincarnation of Sirius. And this would make sense because Sirius is the wolf star and the wolf star is said to follow Orion across the sky. Hunt's real name is Orion. So I, this is another one that goes along with the whole star names. I don't think this is accurate. I do think that Bryce does have this starborn power. Um, I'm not sure where she got it from. I have a few different ideas, but I'm, I don't think this is I don't think she's the reincarnation. I do think that's possible if Hunt and Bryce are endgame. Now, are they endgame? I have no idea only because it's SJM. I feel like if she doesn't make Hunt Endgame, I don't know. It's, it's too predictable. She always throws like another character in in the second book. Personally, I do really like Adia. Okay, here's the thing. I do think they are Endgame. I don't love that they're mates. I don't think we need everyone who's in a relationship to be mated. Um, that part of the book kind of drove me bonkers. I kind of wish they were just in a relationship. There doesn't need to be a whole biological level. I think she might end up using that somehow in the next book and that's why she did it. But I don't, we don't need mates for every single relationship. Personally, I do really like Adius. I'm not sure where his character development is gonna go. He really does kind of give me Resand vibes, but I also kind of hope she doesn't do that just because I feel like that's too obvious of her to do. So I kind of do want Hunt and Bryce to end up being Endgame. The first time I read this, I wasn't a huge fan of Hunt and he's still not one of my favorites. I mean, that has since changed. Hunt is now one of my favorites. Rune 
is 100% my favorite guy. Rune is 100% still my favorite guy in the series and might have some sort of a uh, distant relation to Resand. So I believe at the end of House of Sky and Breath that Bryce compares Rune to Resand, which is something like I noticed in the first book, but I don't know. It's my mind. I can't. I can't with it. <laughs> in uh, Crescent City. I love Rune's character. I want the best for him. I still want the best but for him. I wasn't crazy about Hunt the first time I read it. The second time reading it, I actually like Hunt a little bit more and I hope they do end up being Endgame. And last up is Just My Hope. I'm hoping the next book has a little bit more spice. I feel like compared to SJM's other works, this was really tame. It was very tame. I think she did make this one decently spicier. It still was nowhere near A Court of Silver Flames. Um, that was like a whole new level, but um, especially compared to A Court of Silver Flames. So I hope we get a little bit less than A Court of Silver Flames, but more than we had of House and We did get that. But either way, I am so excited for House of Sky and Breath to come out. It is one of my most anticipated book releases of this year. All right, so before we jump into my overall review of the book, I just wanted to talk about some crossover things I noticed. So one is the Viper Queen. So she was doing, or she was giving Therian her blood in order to control him. This is similar to what we see Maeve doing with the blood oath with her fae in order to control them. So I really like that we get that whole throne of glass connection. We also hear the Asteri talking about fae that could take the form of animals. Hello, throne of glass. We have Rowan turning to an owl. We have like all those different shifters. So I thought that was very interesting. Also, is Rune Damati, and I just was very slow to process that, like I never thought about it and connected the two, but Rune is definitely Damati. And then I already talked about Truth Teller and the whole sword uh, of Gwyndian, I believe, that is actually the star sword, and how did that end up in this realm? All of that is just absolutely fascinating. And then we have the Autumn King, who I actually think could be descended from the Autumn Court because he has the red hair and he has the whole fire magic. It all just completely blows my mind. When I finished this book, I literally stared at a wall and was like, I need to process. So I'm going to be doing a full crossover video after I do a reread of this book, just because there are so many little details, but let me know in the comments if that's something you guys wanna see. All right, so moving into my overall thoughts regarding this book. This is probably gonna be slightly unpopular. I didn't actually enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed Crescent City. I feel like she threw so much information at us and I don't understand the whole lighting or the whole Thunderbird story. I feel like it took up so much of this book without there really being a big payoff. Maybe the Thunderbirds are going to end up being one of the main players against the Asteri because they can harness or suck in this first light and second light, or they use light to power themselves. However, I just feel like there was so much of it for so little of the actual story. I don't know. I didn't love it. I also didn't love Bryce in this. I feel like Bryce wasn't, I don't know. First of all, the whole the fact that Danica had this whole secret relationship, Bryce didn't know a lot about Danica at all. And I feel like there was just so many secrets that Bryce should have picked up on. Also with her not telling Hunt some things, I felt bad for Hunt in this. I really liked Hunt a lot more in House of Sky and Breath. Um, but I just feel like Bryce was being a little bit manipulative and to the point where she didn't have to be. I liked the whole Hind and Rune magic situation where they're able to go into each other's head. I did guess it was the hind pretty early, especially when she is awoken to have some non-con sexual stuff. Um, I realized that was probably Pollux, but I did really like that. I thought that was really cool. I really wanna see how Rune handles it. I'm also so scared for Rune, but overall, I just feel like the book had so much information that I think is going to be very important. It was just a lot. It took me a long, well, it took me two days to read the book, but I was struggling through the first half. I really didn't feel engaged until more than halfway in. So I wasn't a huge fan of that. I'm really not super excited to do a reread. Um, I'm very excited to do a reread because I want to find the crossover stuff, but still it was a hard book to get through. So overall, this is not my favorite in the Crescent City. I think that last sentence kind of makes up for it. I love that she crossed the worlds, but I think there were a few issues with this book overall. All right, guys, thank you for watching my deep dive into House of Sky and Breath. Please let me know your thoughts on everything I said or your thoughts regarding House of Sky and Breath or what you think is going to happen in the third book. I can't wait to read these comments. Now, I said this already, but I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.